attorney Mark O'Mara, very familiar with the federal court system, something we don't often get to see because uh, you may have seen in our uh, news coverage, uh, we've got artist renderings. Cameras are not allowed in a federal courtroom like they are in a state courtroom, so uh, I think it's a little bit different environment for all of us. In terms of this jury selection process, let's start with these questionnaires. I, I know you say that they can be helpful, but they can also present a challenge. Well, they're a great foundation because they give 20, 30, 40 questions for the jurors to identify, answer, and, that, and that gives the both sides, the, the government and the defense, an opportunity to get some background and some foundation. I used to really enjoy questionnaires because you sort of presume that they're going to tell the absolute truth. And without impugning the integrity of any of these jurors or the pool as a whole, I now have a real legitimate concern because we now know that there is this category. We call them stealth jurors. They are people who want to get on the panel for bad reasons. They want to write a book, they want to convict her, they want to acquit her, whatever it might be. They're not being sincere jurors. And here's my concern with the questionnaires. If you have a questionnaire and you're willing to lie about it, you can actually get through that first filter that the questionnaire is supposed to be. So all that really means is that both sides, the government and the defense, has to use not only the information that's available in the questionnaire, but the other side of information that we now use sort of as a, a normal practice, and that's social media investigation, because both sides are doing social media investigation on these potential jurors to make sure they know a fuller picture about what they and who they are, and also whether or not it's consistent with what they say in the courtroom. Now, one thing I thought interesting about these questionnaires is it was basically putting the prospective jurors on notice that they were going to be considered as a juror for the Pulse trial, the North Salmon trial. And a lot of times I think when you get jurors, especially if it's a non-high profile case, they don't know anything about it when they show up for jury selection. They don't know if it's going to be a civil case, a criminal case, a robbery. Um, in this case, though, they have known for several months that this uh, was going to involve the Pulse trial. Now, uh, the judge did apparently instruct them when they filled out these questionnaires to avoid any media coverage. You can't always avoided in the doctor's office or the bar or something, but uh, they were instructed to stay away from media. There were still some who acknowledged that today driving to court, uh, they heard it on the radio. Uh, they caught a little bit on the Today Show. Or you got to wonder too, did they do a little bit of their research on their own? How tempting could that be? It is extraordinarily tempting. It just is. Don't forget, we now live in a social media society where in a moment's notice with one keystroke, you can get information about anything you want. So the concern is that they're gonna have that normal level of curiosity. And I'll give you an example. This very week in Seminole County, a few miles down the road, eight days into jury selection and a death penalty case, the judge had to start over again because a couple of the jurors looked online, found out some information, discussed it with some other juries, and there goes the whole panel. So this is really a concern. Judge Byron is gonna do the best he can to encourage, order these jurors to stay focused only on what goes on in the courtroom. But we are so used to finding out information any way we can, it's going to be a very difficult task. And many of the prospective jurors, they all said that they could set aside their prior knowledge of this case, they could set aside their emotions, but they did indicate, those that remember this, that there was emotion involved. They at least remember this massacre that occurred, the 49 lost, they remember the memorials. Um, how difficult is that in a case like this where it just really tugs at the heartstrings and, and being able to separate yourself from that? The best way to try to address that, because you're not going to divorce the juror from his or her emotions. But what you can do is get them to acknowledge it. Get them to say, look, this was a horrific tragedy. 49 people lost their lives. The families were destroyed throughout the country. Acknowledge that and put it on the table. Because if you don't, if you keep it hidden, if you say, well, let's not talk about the tragedy. Let's not talk about your feelings. Just promise me you won't have the feelings. That's the worst way to handle this. What you have to do is get it on the table talk about it, sort of get it out in the light, and then convince the jurors that the only way they can be good jurors in a case like this is to listen to the law, listen to the facts. If they want to have a just verdict, they cannot use their emotions. They cannot use whatever information that they heard about because nothing exists in this case yet legally until that first witness tells us his or her name and begins to testify under oath. And that's what the defense attorneys have to do and the government attorneys have to do to make sure that everything before that first witness stays outside of consideration. 
Um, just to kind of give a little preview of what's coming up next in this trial now. Um, tomorrow, jury selection will resume. The judge is going to be bringing in, I think he said, uh, 14 prospective jurors. These are ones who haven't been here before. Uh, so the ones that uh, were here today that remain in the jury pool, they will... Uh, probably get to stay home for the next couple days till they get closer to narrowing this down to the actual uh, 12. I, what I don't know is whether they will bring them back for more questioning or uh, do you think that it would possibly be once they got through this round, once they've been through these extensive written questionnaires, will this really be it? Well, the questionnaires is round one, let's say. Round two is today and the rest of this week, which is what we call individual voir dire or jury selection. That is where we talk about uh, pre-trial publicity, biases, prejudices, medical conditions, whatever may make it such that they cannot sit. Once we get through round two, then round three is the general voir dire or general jury selection. And that's where they'll talk to the whole panel of somewhere around 50, 60, maybe as many as 70 jurors at one time. And they can ask more generalized questions. They can get more specific responses from the individual jurors, even question the jurors more in in the view of everybody else and have some interaction, one juror to the other. And then once that process is done, then they'll start actually picking the jurors. You don't truly pick jurors. What you do is you strike the ones you really don't like. Two types, cause strikes, meaning judge, this person should just not sit in this panel and here's why. Maybe a victim of domestic violence. Maybe somebody's got a medical condition. Maybe somebody with children at home that they can't otherwise care for. Those are cause strikes. Then each side has what we call peremptory challenges, meaning for whatever reason I want, except for prejudiced or, or biased reasons, for whatever reason I want, I want this juror off. So what really happens is the jurors that are left, that's your jury, not the ones you pick, because you pick them to not be on your jury. And it's the strategy that goes into narrowing those down it's that a, uh, is why... A three-dimensional uh, chess game. It, it's, it's fascinating to watch. Well, uh, Attorney Mark O'Mara, thank you very much for joining us. You're going to be joining us throughout the course of this Absolutely. trial that's going to last about five weeks here, both on News 6 and ClickOrlando.com. So, uh, Lisa, we're going to send it back to you, and uh, it's going to be a long time out here, but uh, definitely a fascinating case. And Mike, thank you. And once again, as Mike mentioned, because this is a federal trial, no cameras are allowed inside the courtroom. News 6 and ClickOrlando.com will have reporters at the trial every day. And we have a special page detailing everything with this trial on ClickOrlando.com slash Noor Selman. And join us tomorrow morning for another discussion. Our coverage begins at 830 right here on ClickOrlando.com. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Lisa Bell.